Chief Operating Officer at Hibiscus Children's Center. I'm joined here this morning with Lacey Buxton. She is the Director of Outpatient Clinical Services. And also I have Susan Murphy. She's the Director of Residential Clinical Services. Hello, ladies. Hello. How are you doing? How are you feeling today? We're good. <laughs> good. That so good's not a feeling. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So today we're going to be talking about the impact of the coronavirus um, to Hibiscus as an organization, but also to the children and families that we serve. So Hibiscus provides therapy um, in the community. We have a lot of specialized programs um, serving the Treasure Coast and Okeechobee mm -hmm. County. Also, our child caring agency that provides shelter and residence to uh, children in need of a home um, ages 0 to 17. So, um, you know, this coronavirus has impacted all of us. You know, there's not one person out there that's not impacted by this. So, uh, Lacey, you know, would you mind telling us you know, what you're doing? Sure. Um, so our clients have been reporting like increase in anxiety, increase in fear and, and feelings of stress with the school being at home. And, you know, these kids are now in, in the home every day with their families who sometimes it's not the best situation for them. So they're experiencing a lot of increased stress as well. Um, our clinicians are also impacted. You know, they have the fear of the unknown. They are worried about you know, how are we going to provide services to our clients? Um, so we've been providing that through telehealth methods, either through FaceTime or Zoom, whatever the family prefers. They've been speaking with the families at least weekly. Most often it's, you know, two to three times a week, whether it be through a quick phone call, checking in with them, seeing how they're feeling. Um, but the kids have responded well to the telehealth, especially the teenagers. They really like it. They like anything to do with, um, you know, technology and phones. Right. So they've responded very well and it, it's it's been nice because a lot of times we depend on the families you know to get the kids to the appointments or to be present so it's really convenient for them and it, we're seeing almost an increase in the teenagers participation in services wow okay yeah because i was curious as to how um this has changed for you guys um before the pandemic did we use telehealth as much as we do now no no not at all and it for the most part, it's been working very well. Sometimes, you know, you do have the challenges with the technology, sometimes with the parents not knowing how to work it, but usually the kids show them how to do it and it works fine. <laughs> so, but they, they like the different interventions that we're using too. You know, they, they've utilized some different things like bibliotherapy, using reading, they can, um, they've been looking up YouTube videos that are therapeutic for whatever it is the clients are feeling. Right. And with Zoom, they can share their screen and they share with the client what they're looking at and they've just been processing through that and assigning homework assignments related to some of those um, videos that they've been watching. Excellent. That's really good. We've had a really good response. Wow, yeah. I think that there's a lot of positive things that could come from this. You know, it's not all negative. Although no. I think there's days where it, it can seem like all the negative is in front of our faces and but definitely seeing some positive things um, as a result of this. So I agree. Right. The, the clinicians are liking it too. And, you know, they've been super stressed out. So providing supervision to them weekly and trying to communicate with them on how they're feeling. I mean, we're all impacted by this and we're all nervous about it, but we, you know, trying to keep our composure and trying to help the kids as well. So we're just having open communication through our supervision about their concerns as well. And that's been helpful. Excellent, excellent. Susan, um, so you work primarily at our residential facilities um, with the with and the staff. You know, what have you been seeing um, in our facilities? What is the impact there that you've seen? Well, the impact uh, at the village and the shelter is that the kids have not been allowed to go off campus uh, due to the COVID-19. So we've had to make some adjustments as far as school. They've had, they were doing school in, at the village. It was in their houses. Every right. day they would be on school like eight to one. 
and then the same at the village or at the shelter. But at the shelter, the nice thing was that since the renovation, we've been able to split up the kids. So we have kids in the, the dining room, we have kids in the separate wings, and then in the literacy room. So it's really been very beneficial for them. They've been able to get on their laptops and contact, be in contact with their teachers via Zoom and do their uh, lessons. And then we have staff, we're fully staffed, so we have staff that are available to help them you know, throughout the day with that. Right, they, so um, staff are basically like the teachers. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been a, a change, but I have to say it's been absolutely fantastic. And the other, what things that we've had to adapt to is that we were having um, services, you know, for we had somebody coming and doing yoga classes, music, art. So we had to adapt and we started uh, a group that has their own karaoke machine so yesterday <laughs> they had a big concert so no way. Um, that's been really fun and then the kids absolutely love it we have another clinician who uh taught a client how to play guitar and that's been a very therapeutic uh, intervention for her and, and helps her with her to use her calming plan when she gets stressed out um, and she has her own guitar now that she received for her birthday so that's excellent. Um, we're also doing day, more daily groups. And then we do have the equine therapy for some of the kids, for a smaller group, say six, seven kids that will be able to go to the uh, Harmony Hope Stables. stables. Yeah. What is it called, Harmony? Harmony Hope Stables. Harmony Hope Stables. And then they're able to go there and just be there without any other kids. And then they do music class there. They have uh, the, the mini horses. And then we have one Rio, the big horse that they're learning mm -hmm. how to ride. So that's been excellent. Um, awesome. But, yeah, it's been really, I'm really proud of the staff because they've really picked up and gone you know, above and beyond during this pandemic. Yes, I mean, I think it just shows how resilient the kids are, and yes, staff, I mean, everyone has really just come together and made the best of the situation. I feel like when it first came about, it was like, oh, how, what is this going to look like? All of our kids uh, doing remote learning and, you know, the struggles with that, but right. it actually has turned out to be um, another positive thing, so. Right, and then the, and the kids are also able to do uh, <clears throat> the video calls or Zoom with uh, adoptive parents, with their case managers, with their guardian ad litems, and they have sibling visits, talk to their parents. So that's been gone very well. So we've really adapted, and especially up at the village where we are having to do Zoom calls with the case manager. So you have 30 some children who all need to speak with their case manager at least every other week or once a month. So that's been a lot of extra coordinating, but they've done a really good job at both uh, the village and the shelter. Excellent. Yeah. So, so self-care during this time is extremely important. Um, at Hibiscus, you both know that we practice the sanctuary model. That's our trauma-informed care approach to how we treat our staff and our kids. Um, one of the tools of the model is self-care. And so that's your plan for what you do outside of work. Um, that's going to help you be the best when you're at work. So, um, you know, what are some of those tips you can offer for self-care, uh, Lacey, to your families and, and the kids that we serve and, and just in general to, to Right. Just identifying the emotions and the feelings that are going on at this time and owning them and knowing that they're normal and helping each other normalize those feelings and finding safe people to talk to that can empathize with you that know what you're going through. Um, connecting with others is a good way. It's really difficult with the social distancing, but video chatting, um, calling people on the phone. I know I have a best friend that I call every day and we talk. Um, about whatever and it just even just to get your mind off of what's going on 
So just utilizing your support system, you know, building a healthy routine, healthy sleeping habits, healthy eating, exercise. That's something else that, you know, the clinicians and I talk about a lot is, you know, what are you doing for yourself? You know, you're, you can't expend all of your energy, you know, and then not give yourself some reprieve and, and, and get that energy back. Yes, for sure. For sure. It's very important and, and, and not something that we want to just dismiss or take for granted, for sure. Especially us working in the health profession so, and our staff. So, and Susan, you know, tell us about um, going into the summer. I believe yesterday was the last day of school for um, Kern County. So, you know, how can we look towards the future and instill a sense of hope, you know, for our clients and, and staff we serve. Okay, so um, what we, they had a pizza party yesterday for the last day of school. And I think I lost the video on this. Mm -hmm. um, here I am. <laughs> and which was really, really, really very fun. Um, and then they're gonna be starting the hibiscus day camp next week, um, where they will have activities are planned for every day and hopefully over the summer, since they're going to be reopening, you know, the Disney, SeaWorld, hopefully the swimming, I mean, we're going to be able to do some, some really fun things. I think they're going to have to get creative with some of it and probably maybe bring some of the activities or what they can do on, uh, at the, you know, on campus, at the shelter and at the village. Um, the village is, I think they'll be done with school next week. They're having a luau next Friday to celebrate the last day of school. Yes. And at the village, they always have parties for every holiday possible. And then once a month they have a party for all the birthdays. So they continue that. They just had a barbecue last weekend for Memorial Day weekend. So all the kids helped with grilling and, you know, they had, I think Chick-fil-A came in they, you know, hopefully we'll have the volunteers will be coming back in maybe by, I don't know, July. And then they love to come in and help, uh, you know, with the parties and whatever else uh, needs to be done. And I know at the village, they also were having the pet therapy where the one lady brings her two dogs in and then they do that every week. They have crafts. So there's lots of things uh, that the village does as well when they have their own day camp. Excellent, excellent. Okay, well, um, we know the importance of mental health because we're mental health professionals. Um, so we prioritize it and, you know, but it's extremely important um, given the times, these unpre unprecedented times. Um, so we really wanna just promote mental health awareness and uh, be able to help others, um, help the kids, help our staff, help our community. So I want to thank you both for doing this Zoom interview today and have a great day. Thank you, ladies. Thanks. You too, ladies.